and let's feed some to my oldest Le Leafy Fry. I've done it for you, so if you were to go on eBay and purchase these, you know exactly how much Rapache food to aquarium water you need to fill up exactly one of these ice cube trays. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be feeding the fish a brand new fish food that I've never tried before, and that is Rapache fish food, the Soylent Green. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you what I do, what my process is when I make up the fish food to get precise exact measurements without wasting absolutely any of the Rapache fish food. So let's get into this week's video. So this is the gel food we're gonna be making up today, the Rapache Soylent Green. We're gonna be mixing it in a Tupperware container and it's really very easy to mix. So basically you mix one part of Rapache gel food to two to three parts of aquarium water. Now notice I said aquarium water. I don't use tap water purely because of the chlorine and chloramine that is found in my tap water. You might be able to get away with it in your area, but here in Sydney, there is chloramine in our water. So I'm gonna be using aquarium water as I believe it's a lot safer. Now looking at the powder, I can see that it's obviously green being named Soylent Green. You would expect that. However, there are some yellow and orange bits of powder in here as well. And what I'm gonna use is this measuring cup here. I've got indicators inside the measuring cup that will allow me to measure fairly accurately an amount uh, for filling up one of these trays. So these silicon ice cube trays, they're the one centimeter cube trays you can buy off eBay. They're found everywhere. Just go on eBay and you'll be able to see them there for sale. I've bought four of them and I'm gonna be filling up all four of them today with the Rapache gel food and storing it in a Tupperware container. Now, I've measured it out. These hold approximately 150 mils of water. Because of that, that means I can mix about 37 mils of Rapache food. I'll just fill this up to 37 mil mark, pop it in my mixing tray, and then get about 112 mils of aquarium water out, pour it into this tray as well, mix it all together, and that will give me pretty much an entire ice cube tray of Rapache food. I've measured it all out, uh, it's not hard to do, but I've done it for you. So if you were to go on eBay and purchase these, you know exactly how much Rapache food to aquarium water you need to fill up exactly one of these ice cube trays. Again, you don't need to do this. You can just get one part of one cup. This is a quarter cup uh, measuring cup. So you can get one of these, mix it with three cups of this, uh, of aquarium water, stir it all together and put it into whatever container you want uh, to store it into your freezer. You can use Ziploc bags, flatten them out in the Ziploc bags so they're easy to break off when you wanna feed them to your fish. You uh, can put them in the bigger ice cube trays if you want. The other thing you can do, and I've seen other YouTubers do this, this isn't the only tutorial on YouTube, obviously, with how to make rapashi. I've seen some ingenious ideas. Uh, cutting bristlenose catfish caves in the stuff. You know, just dip the bristlenose catfish cave in the rapashi as it's hot dip all sides on it, let, put that in your freezer or your fridge for a couple minutes, let it solidify on the surface and pop that in your aquarium with your bristlenose catfish. A great idea. I'm trying not to waste any of the Rapache food because it isn't exactly cheap, but uh, a container of Rapache food, this cost me about 60 Australian dollars, uh, will last you a very long time. Uh, that said, in my fish room, because I've got 30 tanks full of fish, I'll go through one of these a week. Uh, and that's not too bad, uh, but you gotta remember that I'm not only feeding the Rapache, I'm feeding a wide range of foods to those fish on a daily basis. They get a wide diet. Uh, we're talking pellet foods, different types of pellets, different types of frozen foods, different types of live foods, and now they've also got the Rapache food as well. So uh, they're getting a very wide range of food over the course of a week. So I'm gonna try to measure this out now, and I'll show you what I do to fill up one of these pretty much exactly. So guys, now we've got to work pretty quickly. I've got my cup of boiling aquarium water. I'm gonna pop it in here. This has been measured out. I'm gonna get my Soylent Green. Notice I put the water in first. Got my measuring cup for the Soylent Green. Get a scoop of it out. I know I've got the indicators on this cup to where I need to fill the Soylent Green up to. Pour that in. Now again, I've poured in the Soylent Green second. That is because I don't want to get air pockets underneath the Soylent Green. And then I'm gonna mix that in. So I've got my fork here, just making sure that there's no lumps in the Soylent Green. Mixing it as well as I can, as quickly as I can. Now if you pour in the Soylent Green powder first, if you pour in the Rapache first and then add your water, you might end up with air pockets uh, where the water can't get to the Soylent Green, to the Rapache, and you end up with dry little areas in your mixture. 
So adding the water first and then the rapashi is better. I do recommend you do that in that order. And then pour the rapashi into your ice cube tray. And let's see how close I can get to this. Starting from the center, then moving to the edges. And there's a reason for that, which you'll see in a second. Okay. Now, I'm gonna use a trusty credit card. You know I use credit cards for a lot of things in the fish room. Don't be dirty. Cleaning algae off the glass. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's free, it's cheap. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. You don't need the uh, magnetic algae cleaners to clean algae off glass. And I do in fact believe that these are safer than your magnetic algae cleaners because they cannot scratch your glass. Uh, with a magnetic algae cleaner, you can get sand or gravel caught between the magnets and then scratch your glass while you're cleaning your, the algae off the glass. Uh, so credit cards are a much safer option. And uh, I use them for making my rapashi gel food as well. Now you can see I've almost filled that up. Now we've got some rapashi left over. So I'm gonna use them to fill out the last remaining squares. You do need to work kind of fast with this stuff because it will start to form the gel fairly quickly. Now you can see how much I've got left in this container. Pretty much every cube is full. So if you want to fill these out, these little trays off eBay, just use my directions and use my measurements that I've just put on the screen here. You should get pretty close to this. So they've got a perfect amount in this tray. Okay, perfect amount. You can see it's starting to get a bit of a skin. And now what we've got also is we've got a credit card with Rapashi on it. We've got a fork and a spoon with Rapashi all over it. And we've got a Tupperware container with Rapashi all over it. So what I'm gonna do now is let these things dry, let them form that gel, and then I'm gonna feed them to the fish as well. There's no point rinsing these out in your tap, under your tap and then throwing it away. There's some food in here, uh, so I'm gonna feed that to the fish. By all means, you don't need to do this or go to these lengths to measure the rapashi out. I just like to try and do accurate measurements and try my best not to waste any of the rapashi. I haven't used it for a long time, but I think it is a great fish food. The reason for that is it will not uh, deteriorate in your water column. You feed pellet foods, you feed flake, you feed frozen foods to your aquarium fish, that, that food is gonna to start to degrade over the next few hours. Uh, the rapashi keeps as a gel, stays as a gel for 24 to 48 hours in the aquarium. It's gonna take a while till it starts to rot in the aquarium. And to be honest with you, it won't last that long anyway because the fish absolutely love it. So not only is this a great food for your bristlenose catfish or your larger cichlids, it's also a great food for fry. Because this stays in a solid consistency for such a long time, you could pop a cube of this in your fry tanks and your fry have food all day long. You can also pop in, say, microworms. I've got live microworm cultures. I can pop them in the aquarium water and they stay alive in the aquarium water for a few hours. Now, what would happen in my system, because I run a sump system, they're gonna get filtered out down into the sump over that time. So it's a bit of a waste of time for me to feed them microworms uh, during the day when they're just gonna go into the filter and into the sump. With this stuff, it sinks. It doesn't go back into the water column until the fish eat it. Because this is a powder, you can even just dip your finger in the rapache, get some powder on your, on your finger and put that in the aquarium and that will feed your fry. So it feeds a wide range of fish sizes, uh, not only your adult cichlids and bristlenose catfish, uh, any fish really, uh, but also your fry. And that's, that's the main big, big thing here is that it doesn't pollute the water column, it holds its shape, and even fry can pick off it all day long. Uh, a cube or two of this in a fry tank with about 100 to 150 fry will last them all day long, provided you don't have bristlenose catfish in that aquarium as well though. So I'm gonna pop this in the freezer now. You can see it's really starting to form a gel. Hopefully you can see that on camera. I can pour it, move it to the sides and it's holding its shape. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer now, uh, make the other batches up, and then we'll pop them in my Tupperware container. So here's my long fin bristlenose catfish tank. You can see the Tupperware container sitting in there. 
weighed it down with the broken plate. <laughs> and um, it's just that the rapashi has, has basically slid off the Tupperware container and the bristlenose catfish are feeding off it. So that's how easy it is to clean the rapashi off the containers you've used to mix it in. The other thing you can use your credit card for is to clean out the rapashi from the Tupperware container, just like that. Move your card into the water and the fish eat. Done. Gone. <laughs> it's that quick. So guys, it's been a few hours and the four ice cube trays now have rapashi in them. So what I'm going to do now is pop them in this Tupperware container. You can see I've already got some pieces in here. Now the rapashi should last a few months frozen in the freezer. See how much one tray is filled up. Next tray. Another tray done. Two more to go. See how much there is in here now. It's got some weight to it. Now the last tray. Okay, and we've got a full tray of rapashi. Now you want to put this in the freezer very, very quickly because you don't want it to melt and it will just melt into one big clump. So pop the lid back on and pop it in the freezer. There you go, I'm surprised it filled up that much. Now if you saw last week's video, you'd know I used these containers to defrost my frozen fish food and to soak my dry pellets in these little containers. And rather than bringing in that big Tupperware container in the fish room and it potentially melting all the rapashi, I use these uh, to scoop this into the rapashi container, that Tupperware container, scoop some out and then feed these to the fish in the fish room. That way that container is in the freezer and they're not gonna all stick together. So I recommend you guys do that. Now I'm gonna feed some of the fish in the fish room this rapashi. And you can see the calvus in the tank behind me, they can see that I've got some food here and there wanting to get to it as well. So let's pop a few cubes in with the light alto lamprologus calvus fry. You'll see the rapashi floats at first and then it will sink after a little bit. You can see white Artolampologus calvus already eating it that quick. Now another pellet is starting to sink. You can see there is a pellet on the water surface on the left there and that will sink in a couple seconds. If I zoom out a little bit, better see the calvus on both sides of the tank going for the rapashi. As you know, Artolampologus calvus can sometimes be finicky feeders and they like this food. This is pretty much the second time I've fed them this food and they are already identifying what it is. Uh, it is a foreign looking food to them, you know, a perfect cube and uh, they're getting the idea of what it's, what it's all about. So I've put three cubes in here. I might add some more, but let's feed some other fish in the fish room this stuff. Okay, let's feed my community tank. So there are a lot of fish in here, more than I would really like, but I don't have the much choice at the moment. With the lockdowns, I can't buy more aquariums and I'm potentially going to have to put some of my fish to grow out in some Rubbermaid tubs. You can see I've got a wide range of different sized fish in here. Some large Kawanga Golds, some Ventralis Chaitika, and some Gelibichromus Regani, my other breeding pair, and a lot of their fry, and some Kawanga Gold fry as well. So it's pretty much all gone, that Rapashi. There's a couple cubes left on the sand bed, and you can see the guys are feasting on that stuff. And I've still got a bit in here. Okay, let's feed some to my older Sleilupi fry. So I've popped some into my Neolampologus Leilupi fry tank. And you can see they're having a feast on it as well. This is the old Leilupi fry I've got in the fish room. Yeah, I'm loving it. Beautiful. Okay, let's feed some more. Okay, so these are my newest batch of Neolampologus Leilupi fry. You can see the pellets have sunk into the bottom. Again, this is the second time I'm feeding these fry the rapashi. It's an unfamiliar food to them. But you can see them inspecting it over there and picking at it. 
Now it will hold this shape, like I said earlier in the video, for over 24 to 48 hours. And it's perfect for fry, even at this size. Because Rapashi is a powder, they can just pick at this and they will have food all day long. Provided you don't have bristlenose catfish in the tank with them, it will last as long as they can eat it. It won't go into the water column. Perfect fry food. The fish will be able to eat all day long and they go hungry. So I'm really excited to see what this Rapashi can do to my fry over the next few months. But that's pretty much the really big draw card for me with this. I've added pellet foods to the bottom of the tank and they just basically turn to powder, turn to dust after an hour or two and they end up in the water column. That doesn't happen to this stuff. Let me know what you guys think anyway. I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are on Rapashi and what your favourite type of Rapashi is. I love it. This is just the Soylent Green. I haven't tried any of the others yet, but I will. As, I, as you know, I like to mix up the food. I'll try something else next time. So there you have it guys, how I make my Rapashi gel fish food for my fish room. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.